So do we have any questions? Ms. Bernard, the Arizona State University is for Christine, uh, specifically about your mapping techniques. Um, I saw that even with the distal, very faint pyroclastic material, it is probably not more than like a veneer, thin veneer on the surface, and it drapes over various morphologic units, basically. You map that as its own unit. Um, so, so, so how do you differentiate between a let's say geomorphic, a geomorphologic unit versus that uh, unit that is clearly defined just based on mineralogy uh, or, or uh, water reflectance properties. Because you're mapping one veneer over a bigger unit, but you declare it to be, a, to be its own unit, right? Yeah, so that's why we came up with the term diffuse, because um, it, it, has a, it does have the spectral signature of the pyroclastics, which we wanted to show in our map. Um, but yes, if you look at just it based upon albedo, if you were just mapping on the WAC, you would not map that as a pyroclastic. So we, we decided to incorporate the other data sets, which include the pyroclastics, the titanium, and the, you know, the M cube spectral, which shows the spinel, just because we wanted to say that in, in these data sets, we did in fact identify pyroclastics. Quick follow up if it's okay. Um, so that there might be a planar area uh, as well as a hummocky area that both is counted within the same pyroclastic unit, although they're very distinct geologically probably, other than the fine veneer of pyroclastic on, on the surface. Is, is that is that correct as per your geologic map? That's correct. So like the, the steep slopes of the highlands probably do not have the pyroclastics. It's been mass wasted down or mixed in too much. We don't see that. But again, because we were so interested in, in showing the furthest extent of the pyroclastics, we would include some of the, the highlands that probably don't have it. Because it, at our mapping scale, we couldn't you know, distinguish every little hummock of highlands that did not have pyroclastics. Check me out on my poster tomorrow. I've got a question about the dunitic or troctolitic material in the central peak in Copernicus. So you, you kind of give suggested that they were either mantle or MG suite. So my question is, is are you using any of the chemical indicators to pin that hypothesis down? Um, are they similar to the Apollo magnesium suite in terms of the chemistry of the different minerals that you're seeing in the remote sensing data sets? Uh, no, we don't do it. Uh, maybe it's a great suggestion. I mean, <laughs> uh, we don't do it anything, uh, any correlations. I mean, uh, we based uh, on the mineral uh, maps. We did it with Kaguya dot data, and um, especially with the um, very high content in uh, in olivine. And so there is, uh, I mean, a very uh, big outcrop of olivine, which is, um, I mean, indicated from from many papers in bibliography, but this is um, it, it indicates also a very high plagioclase content. Uh, so this is why is dunitic or troctolitic. But I mean, we don't we didn't uh, make any correlation yet. <laughs> I think Paul Sprudis, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Paul Lucy's group published some magnesium number maps though right so you could be looking at some of the magnesium number maps that were generated earlier to try and test some of those different hypotheses ah, okay thank you i will try <laughs> hey uh this is again on copernicus uh this is deepak uh two information questions uh did you mention the scale at which you did the geologic mapping i don't remember. No, I forgot it. Sorry. Um, one uh, on uh, 4,000, uh, 400,000. Sorry. One is to 400,000. Uh, sorry. Can you repeat the scale, please? Uh, 400,000. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, the second was pertaining to the impactor direction. Was that something that you inferred from your geologic mapping or was that taken from literature? I mean, the, um, the fact is ob oblique impact, uh, it was already inferred by uh, Skuratov, uh, but uh, he didn't infer the directions. We find this uh, um, different, male differentiating uh, on the, in the Northwestern sector that made us think about uh, southern toward north, uh, southeast toward north to northwest direction. I don't know if I responded to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, the last question is pertaining to that. Uh, you mentioned about the red unit in the northwestern region. So, uh, you know, from a cratering perspective, how do you think something on the crater floor, which is heavily modified and comprises of impact melt, matches with the ejector material outside. Yeah, yeah, because if you look at small scale, in, at the regional scale, you can see that uh, um, that um, red uh, reddish, I mean, uh, units uh, are even out of the of the crater. So that uh, is why we think uh, is a, like an ejecta melt, uh, like flow downward, after the cratering process. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I'm Gojek Blau from University of Münster, Germany. And I have a follow-up question like Hannes from Philippe. And my question is like, when you have a different spectral data, then you see the zones that are like, yeah, that has a mixture of certain percentage of plagioclase, certain percentage of olivine and something like that. How do you deal with it? Yeah. <laughs> we use the, the different maps and uh, we use the percentage content uh, in the different um, minerals. So um, basically, we uh, we made a sort of uh, um, how can I say um, you have hundred uh, percent the tot your total is hundred percent uh, then you have a certain percentage of uh, plagioclase a certain percentage of olivine and so on and we made so the uh, basically the total of uh, the percentages I don't know if I answer you. Ah, how do you sure? Sorry, um, with uh, different subunits, subunits. Uh, so we showed uh, like um, with different color, uh, a different shade of the main unit. Uh, that uh, I mean, in the legend, uh, you can you can see there is a, a higher percentage in olivine or uh, plagioclases or uh, so on. Okay. <laughs> 